All right, everybody, welcome to day one of the Great Reset. We have our coaches, Jared and Lau, who've helped me over the years. They're my compadres in Costa Rica. Amazing, incredible backgrounds. But at the end of the day, I always choose you because you're so similar to me in the way that we think and the way we live. And I want to share that with our audience. They also are way more patient than me. <laughs> I'm out here running this giant company and I actually do live this way, but I wanted to make sure we had amazing coaches that could really do the follow-up and answer the questions and be there because this program is heavy. It's a lot of information. So we're going to dive right into today's lesson because this book that we are all going to be reading together, Never Be Sick Again. This was the cherry on top of my health. Last year, I found cleanses to strip the biofilms from my intestines. We've talked about it a lot, but this is how you keep from ever getting that way. And it, it really changed the trajectory of health for me and Jordy, just taking these next little steps to clean things up. So let's dive right in because, you know, kind of premise of the whole book is that we want to have cellular health, that you can prevent any disease by having good cells. So there's one disease, cell malfunction. I'm going to argue that it's fascia dysfunction that causes the cell, mal <laughs> but we'll talk about that on another day. And that there's really only two causes, which is deficiency and toxicity. And then there's six paths that we'll chat about. So let's just jump in and talk about deficiency. So we're talking about everything that we consume and why are we deficient? So I'm going to toss that to you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us here. Here again, it's truly an honor. And I think we can start with deficiency with the most basic, basic thing, because at the end of the day, this book, what is trying to help us understand is that if we go to the simplest or the simplicity of, of how we live life, we can find the answers there. And I would say deficiency has everything to do or deficient nutrition starts with the soil depletion. That's right. So if our soils are a mess because the way that the industry is cultivating the food, full of pesticides and full of stuff that are actually depleting the soil of nutrients, then what we eat doesn't have any nutritional value really. Right. There's so many things that contribute to our nutrition, actually giving us nutrition. And I'm so on board. I think the two top two things on these two topics is depletion of the soil and then toxicity that's just on the plants. You know, Jared, you've lived in America before and most of our followers are in America. It is very, very difficult to even find this food. So what are your top two or three tips for, let's just talk vegetables, like getting the best possible outcome that makes sense also for a modern life, because you know what everyone's going to say, I, I need something that's quick and, you know, I'm running around. So we want to try to merge a modern lifestyle with more of a ancestral way of eating. Well, it's that, that fine balance. It's okay. This quick, I need this now so I can continue on my day. <laughs> my other toxic consumption of media. Yeah. <laughs> or the balance of, okay, I'm really going to take the time and make the investment because it's important. My health is important because if I don't have health, I can't be doing all these other things that I have to do the rest of the day. Right. But one thing that really comes into mind that that we've had a lot of people have a lot of success with is getting out when you have the chance. I know some of you are living in Northern states or places where there's a lot of snow and a shorter growing season, but there's a lot of farmers markets. There's a lot of markets where people are coming together and you start to build a relationship with those people that are in your community, in your neighborhood, in your vicinity, and you get to know them and you get to understand how they're planting and cultivating these goods, these foods, this medicine, like that alone, uh, reach that, Jared. <laughs> huge, it'd be, be a huge change in um, the ingredients that you're using that will have many more nutrients than mm -hmm. the things that are sitting on the supermarket that uh, are conventionally grown. So and if somebody that. does go to a supermarket, what's the top tip? Organic. Oof. Number two tip, organic and yeah. fresh. Yeah. As fresh. Organic, fresh. I do believe though, and I really encourage 
Like don't, don't meet with resistance right out of the gate. Even here in Texas, when I was living here, I did exactly what you said. And I had relationships with some local growers. And even if you're in New York city, there's still local growers that come in and I ended up having, they would send me a list of things and I ended up having them delivered. So it, it is available. And yes, it takes a little bit of an extra step to get there. But all I really want for the very start of this program is this awareness that even if you get the best of the best of the best, whole foods, whatever, most likely it's still a little bit depleted. So if we're going anything below the best of the best of the best, we may not be getting any nutrition. So then let's talk toxicity. I just have learned so much about the toxicities from my personal care products from this book, because I feel like my food I had already cleaned up, but my toothpaste, <laughs> my deodorant, these are all like, when I'm talking to my friends, I tell them like, look, these are easy changes. This is a swap out and it's, it's not more expensive. I don't think so. You just got to find your peeps. <laughs> you got to find the, the woo woo store <laughs> to start getting all of your products. And again, it's worth it. I mean, I was reading some studies about a direct correlation of toxic deodorant and breast cancer, you know, the National Institute of Health. So I also read a report put out by the FDA that they basically were saying, oh, it's safe, but we have found forever chemicals in basically virtually every part of the environment. So again, we are here to say, you got to do the best you can, but what you don't want to do is just mindlessly zombie walk through life and not be aware that you're deficient and that you're toxic. So let's talk about toxicities. Where are the, where do y'all think the most of it's coming from? Yeah, it's a good it's, question. It, <laughs> if we look at the book, the six pathways, there's toxicity in each one. In of them. each one, yeah. So it's starting to become aware of those different pathways, which we have the list. I was going to say, I have the list, but I love this quote to what we were all saying. It says, to some degree, almost all, this is on, by the way, if you're reading along page 58, to some degree, almost all Americans are overfed, but undernourished. And that everything that we eat, unless we make very special choice, is nutritionally inferior to what our ancestors ate. And then when it talks about detoxification, it says our bodies do have the ability to detoxify, but our detoxification mechanisms require the nutrients for them to function. So the cell malfunctioning through those two pathways, deficiency and toxicity, they work hand in hand. It's not just like you could do one, <laughs> you got to do both. Okay, so I have the list here. I'll run through it and then we'll just touch on it and then I'll let you guys wrap for today. But the six pathways to these two causes of disease for the one disease malfunctioning is nutrition, which we've talked a lot about, toxins, which we've talked about, and then it gets into where you just go... Okay, so psychological, what are you consuming every day that could potentially be lowering your vibration, right? Physical and physical is pretty much the amount of movement that you get. I'm going to give my top tip is to get an Apple watch or a Fitbit because we all live in the blue zone and one of the main, one of the blue zones in the world. And one of the main characteristics of blue zones around the world is that it's natural movement all day. Cause some people will be like, well, I'm super physically active. I'm like a triathlete, but I'm on the computer for 10 hours a day. And then I, you know, or think about the surfers in Malibu, <laughs> you know, they have the most stressful day ever. And then they like work it out in the waves. And at the end of the day, that is not how we're intended to address our physical body. And then uh, genetic. And I love that we're going to be talking a little bit about epigenetics because this is something I've had thorough testing. And no matter what thing you are dealt at birth, 90% of it is how those genes express or whether they express or not. And that is the environment in which we put them in. So I thought that was great. And then the one where I was kind of like, wah, wah, was medical. What have we done medically? The minute we take a drug, we are altering ourselves uh, chemically. And so I think you two know that I've gone completely off of everything even though I've been diagnosed with very scary things over the years. And Laura, I think you experienced that as well. So do you guys want to touch on any, do any of those really resonate with you guys? Okay. <laughs> All of them and uh, each one has its own 
obvious things maybe we can say real quick but for example physiological I would say that there are very very obvious things that we can use as examples so psychological as you mentioned is everything we're consuming social media the you the excess use of electronics family drama thinking our family, family drama the way that we don't process or we don't really get in touch with what's happening inside of us and we put all the emotions under the carpet and we just don't see what's happening there. Everything it's going to express somehow through the body. The physical, it's everything we put in the body, everything we consume, everything we eat, everything we put in this vehicle from cosmetics to pesticides to conventional oh. food to packaged food. Uh, also, the lack of exercise and something you mentioned that is extremely important is how the the convenient things or or how the convenience of this modern world has really affected and really changed our programming and our mindset in a way that we always look for the most convenient things um so this is actually from the b book from passion and purpose to products and prosperity but i think a great way to end it is to talk about this because we need a shift in the way we think about quote unquote what we do and don't consume and for me, this was almost like a slap down when I saw it. I was going to create a different food pyramid and go into the organic and all of that. And when you really look at things from a vibrational standpoint, I would have never thought about essential oils, but guess what? Now we're using them in the sauna. We're putting them in food. Look at that. Sunlight and chlorophyll and essential oils are the highest vibration. How many people do you know that sit down and diet plan and say, let me make sure I'm getting my chlorophyll? Not in that, yeah, from that perspective, definitely not. And things like sunlight, things like earthing, that are things that are free. We don't That's really right. to eat the things that nature gives us because we think we have to pay really expensive things or have the latest machines instead of going out, receiving right. sun and putting our feet, our barefoot, being barefoot in the ground. So that, that doesn't cost anything. So for us, it, in a, at a certain level, we don't give the value or taking breath, like deep breaths, doing breath work. It's free. So we don't really put attention to those things. Right. I know you guys know I have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And then I just saw new research how doing very strategic and, and long, you have to do it for about an hour, but like that it, it does the same thing. I was like, oh. <laughs> I could have saved, you know, $10,000 on that. But um, no, I think what everything that you guys are saying, just so you know, we are going to trickle all of these lessons throughout the entire program. But I think for today, in terms of our mindset, I think the quote of the today day is about the mindset. We, yes, you have to go to the grocery store or the farmer's market. Yes, you've got to get started on your meal plan. We'd love to see you get some sunlight or whatever. Just know that the main thing that we want everyone do, to do today is to open their mind, open their heart, not meet this with resistance and just start to kind of grab the philosophy of how our cells can malfunction. And I I think if we just approach our life with even a basic, basic level of awareness, I think people are going to start to make that change immediately. So thank you guys for joining us for today's lesson and stay tuned for day number two. It's going to be awesome. Day two is all about food combinations. And I have to tell you, this is probably the biggest change uh, that you're going to make. And for a couple of weeks, it's going to feel super weird. But now that we've been doing it for almost eight, nine months, it's just what we do. So you're going to learn what you can and cannot pair that your body is actually able to digest. So it's a totally new way of thinking, approaching things from the level of the microbiome. So very excited. Stay tuned. Day two coming soon.